back to your from the CFP. My name is Matthew Coyle. I'm the Director of Financial Planning here at Advanced Capital Group in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Very nice to be back with you post-Thanksgiving. Hope you had a very nice holiday. I, for one, am ready to make the push uh, to the end of the year. Let's finish strong. But, of course, we're going to talk about a topic that has been coming up more in my meetings lately. We're going to talk about economic slowdown, recession, or at least economic slowdown. Is there one coming in the U.S. today? Yeah, maybe, possibly. We're going to look at some data today and Take a look at that and see what is kind of on the horizon. Maybe we're due, maybe we're not. I don't know, but let's talk about it on episode 75 of You Heard It From a CFP. Let's dive in. All right, so I spend a lot of my time talking to individuals and uh, to business owners. And in the last three to six months, I would say the biggest topic besides just the market in general that they'd like to talk about is the economy and whether it's slowing down what we're seeing out there what to do if there's an economic slowdown things like that now without using the dreaded r word recession of course because even sometimes defining what a recession is is a little bit difficult i mean officially there's a definition for it but no one seems to agree on what it is or how meaningful it is let's go ahead and look at a few things we're gonna look at car prices we're gonna look at interest rates we'll look at housing we're gonna look at credit cards 401k withdrawals and ism data what is all of that let's look at that now we'll start with one of my favorite things to look at when it comes to whether things are slowing down and it's been a topic that you hear a lot about lately is car prices actually car prices car prices have been really popular and a lot in the news lately just because of such a weird dynamic they had over the past year and a half or two years especially due to covid one thing that we look at when we're looking at economic slowdown are car prices lots of people track car prices so q first chart and this is the Mannheim Sales Index. Now, what Mannheim is, if you know anything about cars, then you know what Mannheim is. If you don't, then Mannheim is basically one of the, it's basically the biggest car auction in the U.S. It's in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. It's not for you and me. It's not for the retail purchaser. It's for the wholesaler. It's for like dealers who buy and sell cars. Q first chart, Mannheim auctions, Mannheim used vehicle value index, mid-November 2023. This has been coming down now after peaking in uh, early January, 2021. And there's one area of uh, economic activity that people look at when they look to see if the economy is slowing down. These prices are coming down quickly. Now, yes, they were pretty high, uh, but the prices that dealers and wholesalers are willing to pay for cars these days is coming down quite a bit. This is one topic that is always interesting to look at. So Mannheim is actually the biggest group in the world that tracks used car sale values and car values in general. Um, and the auction prices for these cars are coming down quite a bit, which is certainly uh, a signal of activity that is slowing uh, people willing to less and let pay less. And I would have just noticed, I drive around uh, the Midwest quite a bit to see family and clients. And I've noticed uh, anecdotally just uh, lots filling up with cars that aren't being sold, whether they're electric vehicles or whether they're normal gas powered vehicles. I've noticed this a lot around the country lately that uh, dealerships that once were empty or near empty are now virtually full and they're not really moving. So Interesting data point there. That's just one thing that's kind of curious to look at. So used cars, definitely slowing. Okay, next up, credit card delinquencies. You know, most economic slowdowns are preceded by credit card delinquencies and mortgage delinquencies, which interestingly, we're not seeing as much of, but we are seeing quite a bit of credit card delinquencies. So credit card delinquencies, according to the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, let's take a look at that. Um, peaking rather dramatically, actually, a big increase in credit card delinquencies, June, 2023, um, and in through the summer, uh, it fell a little bit, but it's peaking again in late autumn. Um, next is 401k withdrawals. I don't have a chart on this, but I do have some, uh, a lot of articles. This actually was the first thing that kind of piqued my interest to do this particular video was 401k hardship withdrawals uh, rose about 36% year over year in Q2, according to Bank of America. Bank of America, and um, along with Empower and um, Milliman and some others are some of the bigger custodians when it comes to uh, 401k providers. So they are in a good position to see what is going on in the world of 401k hardship withdrawals. Those are rising and unfortunately rising significantly over the past year. So another thing we typically see before economic slowdowns is credit card delinquencies and hardship withdrawals in 401ks. So if you're looking at the data on this point, you would certainly, um, you know, another data, data plot that's kind of lining up on that one. So 401k withdrawals are certainly rising. Let's look at something else. Let's look at the ISM. And it used to stand for Institute of Supply Management, still does, but it's really just a purchaser's index. Uh, and they talk to people, uh, the index talks to businesses that make things, they build things, they produce things. We are seeing a slowdown in the ISM. So 
you add that to the list as well. This is another uh, seems to be evidence of an economic slowdown possibly coming into the next year. We are at levels that we haven't seen in a while. It's been falling for some time, and we are at levels uh, that we haven't seen really since 2020 uh, or roughly 2008 since the recession. So the ISM is definitely slowing down, not what you want to see. Okay, next up, interest rates. This is actually my favorite one because this is the one that almost nobody thinks of when they think of economic slowdowns. One of the most reliable indicators of an economic slowdown post-World War II is the spread in yield or the or what you're earning off a bond between a 10-year bond, let's say a longer-term bond, and a shorter-term bond. In this case, it's called 10s over 2s. 10s over 2s, as I cue my next chart here, 10s over 2s refers to the spread or the difference between the yield on a 10-year bond and a 2-year bond. Normally, a 10-year bond or longer would pay a better yield, a better rate, than a short-term bond would. That's called a normal interest rate curve. If you're willing to lock your money up for a longer period of time, you want a better rate. If you're willing to lock it up for a shorter period of time, you're willing to accept less. In times of economic slowdown or uncertainty, that flips. It becomes what's called an inverted yield curve. This has been in the news a lot lately. Now, this is one of, a, one of the most reliable economic indicators when it comes to slowdowns and potential, yes, I'll say it, recession, um, is the 10s versus 2. 10 over 2 spread is an inverted curve. It basically means that short-term credit is paying better than long-term credit, or at least it's yielding more, right? Times of economic uncertainty tend to rear their head in interest rates. Interest rates are by far the most uh, important economic subject. Okay, last one, we're going to do housing. And we'll do housing starts, and we'll do existing home sales because they are different. And uh, then we'll talk about what to do about it, what, uh, you know, maybe five or six things you could do. If you really think there's an economic slowdown coming, what to do. But first, let's look at housing. We're going to look at new privately owned housing units start. These are called housing starts, and they are really important. Q chart. Um, Housing starts have actually been falling since early 2022, about like May, maybe April, May, about April of 2022. And this is really critical because this is new housing starts. It's not existing home sales, a house that's already on the market or that's already been owned. These are people starting, like buying and, and starting new homes. Okay. And um, again, rates affecting this. We saw tens over twos. This is really critical to the, to the economy. A lot of activity revolves around housing starts furniture being purchased, property taxes being paid, um, vehicles, per there's a correlation between vehicles being purchased in cities and how many housing starts there are. A lot of these things are driven by housing starts. A lot of economic activity is driven that way. In this case, since May or April of 2022, housing starts have gone one direction, that's down. And typically not great for property tax receipts, sales tax receipts, sales of cars, sales of furniture, sales of home furnishing, sales of so many things are driven by housing starts. This is indicative of a slowdown for certain. And we can take also a same uh, an existing look or a look at existing home sales. And we'll do that right now. And you see the same story here, of course. If I can pull up a chart on home sales. And Q chart. We see the same thing here with existing home sales. This is as of January 2023, but we've seen this throughout the entire year of 2023 going back a ways. We are at a level of existing home sales that we have not seen since really the depths of COVID and the depths of uh, the 2010-2011 slowdown. So last time we had a meaningful slowdown in this, in this economy, which was really, I don't really count COVID. That was more of a shock. If you look at economic driven slowdowns, um, the last one was really 2011-ish. So we are back down to those levels again. And uh, existing home sales, not for, uh, not forecasting a great economic period coming up the next six months to a year. This is indicative of a slowdown. So if you look at everything we've looked at thus far, uh, car auctions, credit card delinquencies, 401k withdrawals, ISM data, uh, tens over two spread, even the 10 over three, same thing, and home sales, it's all pointing to some type of slowdown potentially over the course of the next six months to a year. Now, that's the bad news. Let's talk about some good news. What could you actually do? What should you be doing? If you think, and this is natural, economies go through this all the time. In fact, it can be a good thing for you. Um, if you're an investor, if you're putting money away for the future, what do you think you should do or what should you be doing if you think you have an economic slowdown ahead of us, which seems to be like, might be that where we're, might be where we're going. So let's talk about maybe five or six things you could do right now if you think you have an economic slowdown coming in the next year. All right, so you think there's an economic slowdown coming, and I actually happen to agree with you, but 
What can we do about it? Because this is not you know, you know, the worst thing in the world. A lot of good investments can be made during periods of like this. And there's things you can do to prepare for it if you think we have a slowdown coming. So let's just talk about it real quick. Number one, lock in your cash. If you have not yet bought T-bills out to six months or a year, if you haven't purchased uh, some short-term credit, or if you're not using money market funds, I bump into a lot of people, surprisingly, still, that even after a year or more of having a lot of cash sitting around in bank accounts paying 1% or 2%, they're still doing it. They're not locking up cash into higher paying money market funds or even buying T-bills or notes out maybe a year, year and a half, what have you. This may be your last chance. You need to do that because if you're not doing it and we do have a slowdown, rates will come down. If rates come down, the rates the banks pay you on short-term credit and short-term savings accounts, things like that will fall, okay? There's no doubt about that. We typically see rates fall during times of economic slowdown because the Fed will probably lower rates like they usually do. So if you haven't done that, man, it is getting to be last call at the bar here. If you do not do that, you need to do it fairly soon. We spend a lot of time looking at our clients' accounts at ECG, uh, making sure they're invested in higher cash paying instruments. Hey, Leo, Leo's back, everybody. He was taking a nap. So lock in your cash if you have not done it. Number two, get your list ready. You may be able to get some investments here in the next six months to a year, a lot cheaper if we have a slowdown or even a, yes, recession, I'll say it. Um, but get your list ready. Have you been looking at a particular company to invest in? Have you been sitting waiting around to make an investment in um, your IRA or a Roth perhaps? And you're just kind of waiting for that time, but you don't like the market right now? Get your list ready because you might get a chance to do so in a very short period of time here over the course of these next three to six months. Number three, increase your savings budget. Um, look, I'm not going to be insensitive. We all have our budgets. We all have what we can afford. But if you can find ways to save more in your budget, devote more to your 401k, defer more in there, get more into a Roth, whatever, whatever it is, um, you will most likely be rewarded for that. Periods of economic downturns are actually great times to invest historically. Okay, I'll put a chart of the average uh, return on the market post recessions. Here, I'll just put it up right here. Most of the time, investing during recessions or periods of economic downturn is a really, really great time to do it because five years beyond that, you probably have a pretty nice healthy return. So it, it, at least if history rhymes, doesn't it's not going to necessarily match, but if history rhymes, it's going to be a great time to invest. So get your budget in order, increase your savings budget, look for ways you can cut some things out you don't necessarily need, and then get that money into savings quickly. Uh, number four, pay off high interest rate debt. If you are sitting on two, three, four, five thousand dollars of interest rate, or excuse me, of credit card debt at interest rates of 16, 17, 18, 19 percent, doesn't really matter what you're earning on your cash, you're losing. Okay, so get it paid off if you can, eliminate it, or if nothing else, transfer it, reorganize that debt, transfer it to a zero percent rate of return or zero percent uh, cost card. There are lots of balanced transfer cards out there. Yes, it will cost you a transfer fee of maybe three percent, but that beats paying 18 percent for the next year and a half if you don't plan to pay it off for two years. So pay off the short-term uh, credit card debt if you have it. If you don't, if you don't want to intend to pay it off and you still have it, just open up a smaller credit card, transfer it over there, get it over on a, on a different balance at 0% for the next 18 to 20 months and just sit on that while you figure out the problem, okay? So get that squared away. Um, number five, shop and be choosy. You are about to see, this is, we're, we're getting into Christmas 2023. This is going to be a, a uh, sales and budgets Christmas. It's not going to be a blowout Christmas. You're probably going to have a lot of good deals. You're probably going to have a lot because people are pulling back. Credit card balances are high and people are pulling back. Shop deals. Don't just go out and buy something the first thing you see. Shop around. There's probably going to be a better price for it someplace else, especially with all the online competition and retail these days. Shop. Be choosy. Don't just take the first thing you see. Be choosy. And finally, what I've been telling a lot of my clients who ask or what, what they should be doing, have access to your home equity. Consider getting a home equity line of credit, uh, a low-cost home, equi home equity line of credit on your property. I have one. They're very inexpensive. Cost me 50 bucks a year to have it. Um, if we have an economic slowdown and home prices fall, which is that happens quite a bit, you are likely to lose equity in your property. Okay, Your equity is something you don't think about a lot of times, but you need access to it if, for example, you were to lose your job in an economic slowdown, something like that. Lock that in. Get access to the equity uh, now on a low cost line of credit. Usually, like I said, you can get up to 50, 75 bucks a year. They're not very expensive and you can lock in the access to that equity now in case your home falls in value and you need it later and there's not as much to draw from. So lock in your cash, get your list ready on uh, investment shopping, 
increase your savings budget, devote more to your uh, deferrals if you're in a 401k perhaps, pay off some interest, uh, uh, high interest rate debt, or at least transfer it right to a lower balance, reorganize it, shop and be choosy, and get a HELOC if you don't have one. You should have one anyway, but definitely before an economic slowdown. Lock in the equity in your home. Essentially, that's what you're doing by doing that. So those are six things you can do. I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. I will be back. Uh, I need to be doing these on a little more regular basis. I'll be back shortly, and I will see you again very soon. Thanks for watching. As I always say, your most valuable asset is your time. Don't forget that. Spend yours wisely, and thank you for spending yours with me. I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.